We're going to show a series of cases. We uh, have uh, audience participation. You should have um, uh, an electronic voting uh, device. If you don't look around you and grab one. Uh, I'd suggest that uh, those of you toward the end of the room, you may want to move a little more toward the middle. We're going to have um, some case details uh, on the right image, and we're going to show imaging on the left. I apologize that we, we, can't, uh, we can't bring the screens in any closer. Uh, so, so you're going to need to be, you're going to want to see the imaging uh, here on the left. Now, um, anyone from the audience who wishes to make uh, comments or ask questions of our expert panelists, please come to one of the mics. We want to pick up your questions uh, so that they can be incorporated uh, as a part of the meeting. Um, so today we're going to try to get through five or six cases. Uh, I want to enter, well, our expert panelists need no introduction, but I'll, but I'll point them out. Starting down at the far end, Dr. Dave Nagorny here from uh, Mayo Rochester. Uh, on his right, uh, Professor Les Blumgart, uh, who's um, from Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York. Uh, next to uh, Professor Blumgart, Mike D'Angelica, also from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, uh, Eduardo uh, de Santibanez here from Buenos Aires, I think is known to everyone in the room. Uh, and Myron Schwartz is here uh, from Mount Sinai in New York. Um, so to begin with, uh, let's have the, let's see. Uh, if, if, if everyone in the room could uh, let, let us know your uh, current status. Um, so my current status is in, a, is in attending. Uh, for less than 10 years, an attending for greater than 10 years, a resident, or a fellow. Please vote. <laughs> All right, let's see how the breakdown is of our audience. So, um, about a third and a third of uh, our attendings, either less than or uh, greater than 10 years, and it looks like we have about a third of our participation as trainees. That's great. Um, let's go to the next slide. Now, this morning, we had five experts, but we had eight people who voted that they were expert panelists. So <laughs> once you vote, we can't change it, and we want to be able to look and see if our, how our experts actually vote. Because after the discussion starts, you know, it'd be nice to see the outliers. So, um, <laughs> you gotta be kidding. <laughs> this was not planned as part of this session. We better go. Huh? Do we need to leave or not? All right. Please check and let us know if we need to leave. We'll do so. All right. So back to this question. Uh, if the five of you experts will. Check two. So let's go ahead and register this, please.
<laughs> what did she say? Stay put unless you choose to leave. <laughs> Is it working? Oh, it is working. They're investigating, and they will let us know shortly. The gentleman's right outside the door. They're just trying to confirm, but they said it's up to us, but they, had, they recommended we stay put for everyone, but it's up to you if you choose to leave. So I'll let you know as soon as I know. All right. Thank you, Kim. We'll continue on with the flashing lights, but uh, please do keep us updated. All right, let's take the first case. Um, this is a 23-year-old woman who has a, a history of two uh, prior renal transplants uh, who presented with uh, left-sided abdominal pain and fever to 103. Uh, she had a CT scan in the emergency room that uh, suggested bile duct dilatation. An ultrasound uh, showed a bile duct of 1.8 centimeters in maximal dimensions and no gallstones. Uh, laboratory studies, uh, her white count was normal, her CMP was normal, her creatinine was 0.8. She's had a, a normally functioning uh, uh, kidney for uh, 10 years. Her urine, uh, her urinalysis was normal and her culture was normal. So let's see the, uh, well let me ask, what uh, additional imaging uh, would you like to get, Dr. DeSante Bonas? Sorry? Yeah, Eduardo? I, I would prefer a cholangio MRI. Well, before you saw her, she was actually admitted to the um, medicine service, and they got an ERCP. Can you go back to the, yeah, show that. What do you think of that, Eduardo? It's, it's uh, the dilated. By luck, but this narrowing, I think at the end, I don't know. I think it's a large narrowing <coughs> in the maybe in the intrapancreatic portion of the coleducum. So, um, do you want a, additional studies? Did this woman have a normal alkaline phosphatase before they poked that thing in her pavilla? So, uh, she did have a normal alkaline phosphatase. Uh, uh, you would not have recommended an ERCP straight away? No. <laughs> what, would, what would you like to see? I think, I, was her pain continuing? Let's just talk about the patient for a minute. Was, she had some pain, it went away. She had some pain that was uh, sort of not, not specific for the um, right upper quadrant. No, she said left-sided abdominal Correct. pain. Uh, she, that's what you said, didn't you? Yes, sir. Left -sided. And, and, and normal, normal imaging and an ultrasound suggested... Ultrasound showed a 1.8 centimeter bile duct. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd have waited a little bit and just seen how she went for a while. Okay. Saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. 